Hello, my name is Feng Cai. I'm working in Kisa Technologies. In this video, I will talk about a port setup in Alpha Pro. This the outline. First, I will go through EM setup very briefly. Then, I will show you pin types and ports in Momentum as well as FEM. Finally, I will show you an example. In Alpha Pro, to set up a port, there are two steps. First, you need to specify which simulation engine you want to use. Under the simulator, you are able to choose Momentum Microwave, Momentum RF, or FEM. It also accommodates your preference to use HFSS. Then, in the next step, you need to point out proper type of ports. You can hover your mouse over a port, then right-click your mouse to choose Advanced Properties. Then, in the new pump-up window, you will be able to see that there are six different types of ports. The auto by default is enough for the vast majority of cases, and I will explain to you which specific one the auto type reverts to. This image shows you all of the ports types. As you can see, in Momentum, it has planar ports with direct source or with virtual extended lines marked in green color. As a counterpart, in FEM, all the ports are physical, and they consider the coupling nearby. The ports could be either planar like these ports or be cylinder in a 3D way. While in the GUI, ports are categorized with the same names as in Momentum. They represent the different types of ports. In ADS layout environment, ports are formed by pins. There are three types of pins pointer pin, edge pin, and error pin. For the pointer pin and error pin, they are very intuitive. You can directly put the pin internally or define an area. For the edge pin, if you put the pin to the edge, then the entire edge automatically becomes an edge, or you can draw a certain line either on the edge or internally. For momentum, here are assumptions that are important to understand your results. Ports placed on an edge will excite the entire edge with a constant potential. Ports inside of a metal are point sources that will excite a mesh with constant potential defined by the edge area or mesh there by default. For the source, assumption here is a lambda source is attached with a source impedance. That means no phase delay between plus and minus terminals, and they are electrically small. Otherwise, it may result in unphysical behaviors. This also brings up the fourth assumption. The condition of a physical calculation is the distance between minus and plus terminals should be less than lambda by 10. It could be a pin with a ground as a reference or a differential port setup. In addition, please pay attention when you apply an edge pin to define your port. In Alpha Pro, if you choose momentum simulation, auto means direct type for most of the cases. If you have a pin at the inside of your metal, then it could be either an edge pin, point pin, or error pin. For this type of port, a lambda source is applied to a local point, edge, or area. There is no port calibration. Direct port is versatile, and you need to pay attention to define ground to make sure the return current along the actual path. Here is an example showing how to set up pins for CPW structure. The port has a 1 plus pin and 2 minus pins. If you take a look at the these two minus pins are placed inside of the metal to avoid the edge pin, so that only uniform source is applied to the mesh cell rather than an edge pin that could apply uniform potential source to the entire edge and give you an unphysical result if the width of the edge is larger than lambda over 10. For the rest of the types of ports, you see that there are parts of virtual ports marked in green color that are connected to the structure and then will be de-embedded. These are called calibration. 
So why do we need a calibration? In hardware, wheel, we have various calibration methods to change the reference location of the exciting source of a DUT. In software, wheel, similarly, we want to use the calibration to change the reference location to eliminate the effect of ends and interconnection. For TML type port, a TML port must be on edge of a transmission line, marked in orange color and it adds number over two feed lines to the transmission line, this is a green color. After the calculation is done, the part of number over two feed lines will be de-embedded out. By using this method, you are able to capture multi modes of the transmission line to get the most accurate results. Suppose we want to characterize the transmission line structure shown in the slides by directly attaching a source between plus and minus terminals. You will see some friction capacitance from the open end effect, which is an unwanted parasitic. So you want to remove this from your results. Furthermore, if your structure is connected to another transmission line, you may want to include the mutual coupling between the two. Right? However, if just uh, simulate uh, this only one part, that won't be included in your model. TML calibration is developed to accommodate both of these effects. Let's see how this works. The original line is our design line, and the green line is the virtual calibration line with the same characteristic impedance as orange lines, and it's attached at the port. Typically, the lens L is a hard wavelength. With two lens L lines to be connected to each other, we create a perfect through calibration standard, from which we are able to extract a model for the one L calibration line. The S total at the source equals to the original line plus this one L S parameters. With TML calibration, the structure has no open end at a port and also removes the mutual inductance. Besides of this, at a port interface, TML calibration works fine in single mode operation. Once multiple modes start to propagate, especially at higher frequencies, you will get a warning during the simulation and the TML calibration is not recommended any longer. When multiple lines where the line ports are set to TML calibration, the mutual coupling between the calibration lines is taken into account when ports are aligned. If ports are not aligned, then the mutual coupling between the calibration lines is turned off. However, there are cases where TML calibration may not work properly. Let's look at this case. The model for the calibration line uses the infinite ground plane in the stack-up definition for its return current. This may cause an impedance mismatch between the calibration line and the DUT, which eventually result in inaccurate calibration. This is particularly true for multi-layer structures, where the infinite ground is set to the bottom layer of the stack up. In a real design like this, if the feed line is very short, but the model with a TML calibration, you may see a higher inductance value from the results. Since the added mutual coupling from the TML calibration is based on the longer line, which will result in inaccurate calibration, this problem leads us to another type of port with calibration TML0. TML0 means the line is fit by a virtual line with length of zero, so the friction capacitance can be removed. We have discussed how direct port is defined and how the TML is calibrated. This is a table to summarize the momentum fit types. It is important to consider these assumptions and conditions, then choose an appropriate calibration technology for your design. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I will talk about ADS-FEM port calibration and fit types.